Welcome, everyone, to SI Media with Jimmy Trainer. Thank you so much for listening. We have an all train of thoughts, and it's a uh, mainly mailbag edition here of SI Media with Jimmy Trainer this week with my buddy Charlie Salicata, who I always do the train of thoughts segment with. Uh, I ask you guys for questions. You guys send in questions, and we also talk about some sports media things. We get into a lot of the Tom Brady restrictions that he has placed on him now as a broadcaster, now that he's an owner with the Raiders. So that's a big topic. The baseball postseason, the announcers, the networks, the lack of local broadcasters is a big topic. Costas. Um, so we get into that. And we also answer a bunch of your questions, some sports media, some not. So that's this episode. Before we get into it, just quickly, I had an awesome, awesome interview with ESPN's Paul Feinbaum on the podcast last week. Andrew Marshan was on the podcast two weeks ago, along with David Shoemaker from The Ringer, who talked about the Vince McMahon documentary on Netflix. Jeff Passan and Brad Nessler were also recent guests on SI Media with Jimmy Trainer. So if you missed any of those interviews, go into the archives, give them a listen, and subscribe to SI Media with Jimmy Trainer, and leave a review on Apple. We'll be reading those probably, I think, next week or the week after. All right. It's an all train of thoughts, all almost all mailbag edition of SI Media with Jimmy Train on this episode with my buddy Salicata. So make sure you subscribe and enjoy it. Keep the questions coming. I'll try to mix this in a little more as we go forward. All right, here we go. All Train of Thoughts right now on SI Media with Jimmy Train. All right, joining me now as he does every week for our Train of Thoughts segment. This is an all Train of Thoughts edition. We're going to answer your questions, get into a few topics before we do that. From WFAN Radio in New York, SNY TV in New York, my buddy Sal Licata. Sal, are you getting ready for the World Series? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess. Uh, almost reluctantly with the situation that, that we have with both the Yankees and the Mets potentially being involved. But yeah, I mean, it's been a, it's been a quite a ride here over the last few weeks in New York sports. There's, there was literally no point during this entire baseball season where – Anyone could have even thought there'd be a Subway series. And now if the Mets can do their part, we'll have one. It's crazy. Well, the Yankees aren't there yet. Oh, they're there. I mean, they're not even playing a real team. Yeah, I, I mean, can you imagine? Think about the, the dynasty years that we watched with the Yankees in the postseason. Look at the Guardians lineup. Like, you're right. They're not – isn't well, that bad? Dropping pop-ups, they're wild pitches. I mean, it's not just the talent. They're Right, right. <laughs> they're supposed to be good defensively and good pitching. Yeah, yet they the wild pitch is galore in game one. The drop pop up in game two. Their lineup is feeble at best. Right. Like, and I'm not trying to minimize what the Yankees have done, but I just I do think that it used to be a lot different in these books. This is the American League Championship Series. This team stinks. But also, you see the difference, and I know no one in New York wants to hear this, but the Yankees, Mets, and Dodgers have three hundred million dollar payrolls. Yes, yes. The Guardians and the Royals and the Tigers cannot compete with that. Right. So the, here's what makes me nervous about the Yankees, because I think they're going to, I mean, this isn't even a competitive series. Right. What makes me nervous about the Yankees is if they play the Mets or the Dodgers, the Yankees are not tested in any way, shape, or form. Like the Mets and Dodgers are a million times better than these riffraff teams in the American League. Right. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a shock to the system when the Yankees play one of those teams. I agree like, with that. And I, I did the whole radio show today basically saying that if the Yankees continue to play like this, they will not beat the Dodgers or the Mets. It has nothing to do with the Mets. They just happen to be a team that's there. The Yankees have not, they have not faced great competition. And I don't think they've played great baseball here through the first six games of the postseason. So, well, well they, the, the benefit they have is if judge and Soto get, I mean, they could wreck games at any time. Yeah, but those two did get hot in the course of the regular season, as hot as you can be, and they were still a 500 team. Like, the difference to me has been their bullpen. Their bullpen has been lights out. If Clay and Holmes and Weaver are this, they can't get beat. Well, no, but that's my point. I would bet anybody, anybody who's listening to this podcast, I will bet you any amount of money that in the World Series, Luke Weaver blows a game. Because Luke Weaver has not been in any situation at all where he's been in a one-run game in the ninth inning on the road, which he's never done before. 
Hmm. So, like, they have not been tested in any way, shape, or form. The Royal Series was not competitive. This series is not competitive. They're not tested. So, Luke Weaver in Los Angeles in the ninth inning facing Otani and Freeman and Betts in a one-run game, he will blow that save. Right. <clears throat> but... Yeah, and we also got to see. He, I know he gave up a homer in game two, but we got to see how if he does get dented up and give up a blow save, how he responds. We haven't seen that. He's unproven, but right. he, he would be the least of my concerns. Everything else, the timely hitting, the starting pitching, Clay Holmes, the middle of that bullpen. I just think the Yankees are are vulnerable. Now they're going to be in a World Series, but it's going to be a significant step up in competition, whoever they right. face. Right, hundred percent. But I think every team is vulnerable in the bullpen. I mean, yeah. as soon as you get into those middle inning guys, it works the same way. I mean, give me a middle inning guy against Judge and Soto, and we'll see what happens. Right. right. Um, I just want to say that I'm coming off what might be the greatest. Well, I don't know if it's the greatest, but one of the greatest gambling weekends of my life. <laughs> my record. On Saturday and Sunday was twenty two and nine. Wow! I just had to, and I know this weekend I'm going to go eleven and thirty six. So I want to make sure I brag while I is, can. Is that a normal amount of bets for you over the course of a football weekend? <laughs> yeah. Throwing yeah. baseball. I was too? I was majorly locked in this weekend. Like I watched every like college and and pro. I I was there at. You know, 1 a.m. watching Kansas State and Colorado on Saturday. 9.30, Bears. That was an easy win. Um, so, yeah. Baseball, too, for you? Yes. Well, I'm not, I don't bet the Yankee game. I did. I'm trying to think. Did I bet a Yankee game? I don't remember. If I, but, yeah, I mixed in the baseball. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. So, I have nothing else really I wanted to say in terms of like news or anything like that. I don't know if you have anything, but it's been a quiet week on the sports uh, media front. And we have a lot of sports media questions, but go ahead. Okay. Oh, well, I don't know if it's going to be a question, but yeah. it's one thing. And if it is, just yeah. tell us. We'll, we'll punt. Brady getting ownership while being a broadcaster. Yeah. I, I fundamentally feel like I have an issue with that. How yeah, there's it? a lot of questions about that from okay. people. Because um, I didn't really... I just tried to glance at the questions. I didn't want to fully read them because okay. I want us to go in fresh and give like a, but I did see a lot of that. My issue with the break, I'll, I'll say this. And then I don't care if he can't go to like the team meetings because Burkhart and Aaron Andrews and Rinaldi will tell them what was said or they'll record it on their iPhones and then he can listen to it. They can't criticize officials and other clubs. I don't understand if he's doing a, um, well, a jet game. He can't criticize Woody Johnson. I it, to me, it's too much of a conflict of interest. I'm not trying to say he should be banned from broadcasting, but I don't think you could be an owner and a broadcaster. I, I don't so, think it. But he's like a five percent owner. He's not a real owner. Ten percent, I thought. And a and did, and didn't they say that they're going to have him be like a vocal? Like if he's just a if he's just a silent investor, fine. But you've got to be able to – he can't have any restrictions as to who he gets info from, who he's critical of. I, I don't – I think know. he can evaluate a game without talking – without going to a production meeting. Yes, that that I think so too. But then you have to be critical of the teams or the owner or whatever. Or the but he's not doing he, that now anyway. Yeah, well, okay. And the only one who ever criticizes the refs is Aikman. Yeah, he's the best, by the way. Him and Buck are just... He was going nuts Monday night with that awful Jet-Bills game, and no one, like, no other... You know, he's like, oh, they threw a flag. I guess they have to. They're required to. Like, no one else <laughs> would do that, like, yeah. you know. um, So, yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, I, I don't think not being able to go to the team meetings is a big deal. If he's doing a Jet game, and if he was doing the Jet game this week... He has to be able to criticize Woody Johnson, and he can't. That's tough, I guess. I don't know how you work around that. It's, yeah. it's, he shouldn't be doing both. That's the so bottom like if line. He, if he was doing the Jet game this week and he said something like, okay, well, the Jets traded for Devontae Adams, big deal. They're playing the Steelers, and that's not going to help them prevent T.J. Watt from getting 74 sacks this week, which is what's going to happen. Like, is he allowed to say that? Right. So I don't know. All right. Let's say that, that that question's in there. We could get a little more. Okay. Let me see. I mean, the questions are all over the map. I mean, ridiculous, serious. 
questions about you. Before, how have you? How, how has it gone in the Lakata household watching all these playoff games? Is everything? Yeah, my wife has yeah. actually been watching uh, along with me. Sometimes you got to be careful what you wish for, you know. And then she starts commentating and asking questions, and I'm like, "Yeah, you have to explain it to her." But it's it's been pretty good. What what does it mean when they hit the ball over the fence? Yeah. What, oh, how many? She just keeps saying the same thing about the game. She doesn't understand. Like, wait, so if they win this, I'm like, no, no, no. It's a best of five, or now it's a best of seven. So if they win this, they still have to win three more, and it comes back to New York. Like she doesn't, it doesn't compute. Wait, the Yankees are the Yankees going to the World Series? I'm like, Psst. the Yankees are going to the World Series. Yeah. Um. All right. All right. Let's get to some of these questions. All right. This is from at Roof Hauser. Do you think this was Bob Costas's last postseason, calling games with the terrible reception he received? Um, I, I have a feeling it will be. Uh, here's what I've learned in this business. Even though it's really dumb, executives pay attention to social media. Uh, no one has gotten criticized more, not just on social media, but in print, radio, longtime broadcasters than Costas. He had his defenders. I mean, I wrote a column talking about how bad he was and people came after me. And I know some people said like he's always called games this way. I was randomly scrolling on TikTok or Instagram, one of them the other day, and they had a play of Jeter in a playoff game when he went deep into the hole and did the jump throw. And Costas was screaming and yelling on the call. So he there was a time where he used to get excited. So I have a feeling this is I, I hope this is the end of Costas on the postseason because it was rough. I I almost hope that it's not because I hate to see him go out like that but the way he signed off to me is he was he was saying goodbye from doing that not broadcasting but doing the play by right. but you, he he's not going to go out in a better way that's how he is as an announcer it's not going to get better next year if anything it's just going to get worse yeah but i don't even think it's fair because now he was bad specifically in game three i thought he got better in game four but uh, the the fact that the blowback was so strong that shouldn't be the reason. I, I'd hate to think that that was the reason. Well, it's because he's not good. Yeah. I mean, did, did you, you like him spending? So you liked in game four when he spent 10 minutes in the ninth inning talking about the six degrees of Kevin Bacon game? I mean. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, but okay. But is he the only one who's not good? Do we want to start picking apart every broadcaster, national well, baseball broadcaster? No, no. There's a lot that are not good. But they're going to keep their jobs. Well, <clears throat> Because there's all because there's not good and then there's not good and really annoying. I mean, John Smoltz has the energy of a yeah. doorknob. He's terrible. How is John Smoltz? Think about the legends: Tim McCarver, Joe right. Morgan, who I like. I don't know how you stand on that, yeah. but like, think about all these great analysts that we've had the pleasure of listening to for years. I forget a, a ton of them, but compared to John Smoltz, who's got zero energy or passion well, for the game. I'm not saying he's not smart, and I love him as a pitcher, but. <laughs> Can you have some energy? It's the freaking postseason. It's also a terrible fit with Joe Davis, who screams and yells every five seconds. It's there. It's a not. They need yeah. a more high energy analyst. There's no doubt about that. You're right about that. All right. M Chuck 16. If ESPN gets out of their current MLB contract after next season, what network currently not airing any MLB games would you want to see jump in on MLB? And who would you want as their announcers? Listen, my prevailing thought from this postseason was they're all all the networks are bad. I mean, TBS with Costas was a, and their camera angles, they're muting the sound during the games. ESPN with their analytics drives you insane. Win probability. Oh and, my god! And Fox, yeah, John Smoltz. I mean, Fox probably does the best job with baseball in terms of the production. What network that doesn't? I don't know. I think baseball is just tricky right now because it's a kind of an old school, old time sport. You need to try to appeal to some younger people. I don't know what you do production wise to not annoy the people like me. And then also, well, here's what there needs to be. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which network airs the game. Every network that airs the game should give you different feeds. You want to have a feed. With all the analytical bullshit, fine. 
then give me a feed where I'm not going to hear about war and VORP and, and FIP and whatever the hell. And just give me a traditional broadcast without the stupid square box around home plate. It's almost like they need two or three different telecasts to get it right because you can't satisfy everyone. So then baseball is very, it's not like football. It's very weird. You have a, the audience is weird for it. It's a sport where even with the pitch clock, there's a lot of downtime. I, I don't know what the answer is. Yeah, it's it's a great question. I think you come up with some decent ideas. I mean, for me, it's just such a regional sport that fans get used to watching their team right. broadcast by pretty much the same team for 162 games right. and their way. And now you in the postseason, you get different teams every round, different announcers. I don't know what the hell they're talking about, like as it pertains to their team. It's different with this than any other sport. I mean, you, you just, just yeah, good. No, no, you just hit the nail on the head. I forgot to mention it. They they need to find a way to give you some local flavor. They've got to. It's not like, here's the deal. In football, there's no local announcers. It's 16 games. Baseball, you spend 162 games with your local announcer, and then they're gone. Yeah. It's, there's got to be something done about it. it it's and it's not the story of the right, season. Right. And it's not like the NBA. The NBA is fast-paced. There's no Per, like it's th there's nonstop action in baseball where there's so much downtime your local announcers you're listening for the stories and what they're telling you about the team it's just a whole baseball is a whole different ball game when it comes to the announcers it's different than every other sport hockey there's no downtime either is there a way to like let's just say for argument's sake the sny crew could do the mets games throughout the playoffs and they would be simulcast they'd have I, to I, put I, it They'd have listen if it's a if it's a Fox game, they could take the Met local guys and put them on an FS1 feed and take let's say it was the NLC like right now the NLCS put Joe Davis and John Smoltz on Fox, give the Mets and put the Mets announcers on FS1, put the Dodgers announcers on FS2. It's all one rating then for Fox. Nobody gets screwed. I guess someone would have to pay like Gary, Ron, and Keith, but they right, can figure that right. out. Or I said, so, why write yeah. the rights? Yeah, yeah. But yes, that's what I was talking about. Like, there's got to be a way where they could have yeah. the home broadcast. And every one of these stations, all they want to do, every one of these networks, all they want to do is put stuff on streaming. So go put the alternate feeds on. If the, if Fox wants to give you Joe Davis and John Smoltz on Fox, okay, fine. Then go on their streaming on you know their app. Go give us the local feeds. There's a right. way to do it. Right. It's funny. We have a question here. I just looked now. It's at Gary's ten twelve. Do you ever foresee the day where MLB, Fox, and TBS are open to alternate broadcasts on their own channels and websites where fans can watch their local announcers? Let the networks control the ads and give us our own announcers in the plus. That's the key to this. The key to this is whoever owns, if it's a TBS game or a Fox game, they have to get all the money. They have to get all the ratings. If it costs money for extra feeds, I don't, you know, there's got, MLB should step in and do something with it. But yeah, this is what people are, you know. People want the local announcers in baseball. There's a new way to level up your sports watching experience, and that's with Underdog Fantasy. Went up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player stats, including touchdowns, passing yards, and much more. Big fan of Underdog simply because it's so easy to use and because it's fun. Higher, lower. That's it. Quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. Passing yards, you're going to go higher, you're going to go lower for that game. You can do it with any player, any game, higher or lower on stats, and that's it. It's perfect and easy to use. That's the most important thing. You don't want to be having to go through hoops to make the plays. At underdog, very straightforward, higher or lower. Making picks on underdog is straightforward, and signing up is even easier. Just head over to underdog. Simply use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with promo code Sports Illustrated, and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick 'em entry, plus up to one thousand dollars in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code Sports Illustrated to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be eighteen or over, nineteen or over in Alabama and Nebraska, nineteen and over in Colorado for some games. 21 and over in Massachusetts and Arizona. And you have to present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP. That's 1-800-639-8783. Or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7-HOPE line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text 
Hope NY 467 369. At Rodney Campbell, how do you feel about the MLB season opening in Japan next season? I used to get worked up about this stuff. Now, like to me, it's stupid. I won't watch it, but I'm not going to get worked. I used to get worked up. Now, I think it's so dumb. I the other, I had no idea the NHL season started till yeah. my buddy Arthur Staple was here, who covers the NHL for the Athletic, and he told me they. Co- I, I I had no idea because they started it, and I don't know where they started the Bog NHL or something. Yeah, the devil. So I can't. Pay, I, I, I'm sorry, but it's I, I'm not paying attention to any of that. I personally hate it, but like you said, I hated it, you know, 20 years ago, whatever right. it was. So it's been going on. I don't just ignore it and move on. Here's one. S. Winklemeyer. Obviously, this question has absolutely nothing to do with the ALCS, but who do you and Sal have on your Mount Rushmore of overweight athletes? Well, I, I can't sit here as a fat person and make call out fat people. It's just not right. You answer it. Um, I mean, Mount Rushmore of overweight athletes. I mean, the one that's two. screaming, yeah. you got two. No, there's two that come to mind right away. I want to see who you say. Well, you right say. now, Josh Naylor is one. I mean, you can't help but notice how no, big he's, he's no, got. Mount Rushmore is all time. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking about it. I mean, it's the, I, the two that him. come to my head right away are William Refrigerator Perry. Okay. I mean, the guy ran in a touchdown and Cecil Fielder. Yeah, Cecil would be one because we both agreed on that consensus. Um, I mean, boy, is it even fair to count the linemen, though? We've seen some big linemen yeah. in the NFL. Um, like Oliver Miller in the NBA comes to mind. He was always big and overweight. Um, that's a good question. When I was a kid, Steve Balboni was. Yeah, he was big. Bartolo, does he make it? Oh, Bartolo, yes, absolutely. Modern that's a good day one. Bartolo. He, he would be number one on the list. Yeah, he's beloved. He's become like, uh, you know, big sexy. Yeah. Um, yeah, Josh Naylor right now though is just huge. I, I couldn't help but notice how big he's gotten. Yeah, I'm not going there. All right, <laughs> East Coast Cheesehead. Just watch Bad Beats in your Tuesday column, and I'm dying laughing. Yet main ESPN social media posts ignore it. I get ESPN Beck commercials 24 seven, but this actual content doesn't get promoted. I know SVP covered it with you, just still confused. Yeah, this is a mystery to me. So Scott Van Pelt and Stanford Steve do bad beats. They do the segment every Monday night. It's the single best piece of content in all of sports media. And ESPN does not promote it in any way, shape, or form. I've asked SVP about it. I've complained about it. They don't post it on their Twitter. They don't post it on their YouTube. Stanford Steve has to post it every week. I don't know. I don't know. It can't be that they're like not trying to promote gambling because – the cat's out of the bag. They have ESPN bet. Like, I don't know what it is. I, you know, there is a thing with SVP where he doesn't get the attention of like um, Stephen A. Smith and McAfee and all that. And he's just as good, if not better than anybody. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, ESPN has a bug up their ass about promoting bad beats and it irritates me. And nobody has an answer to it. No, they just yeah. don't. Yeah. I mean, I wish I knew. All right, and MWC111973, this may be too New York-y, but can you explain the terrible driving of people who live on Long Island? Mm. As a New Jersey product, I don't understand how there's always massive traffic on Long Island highways because of accidents and construction. I'd go nuts if I lived there. The Cross Island is the single worst road in America. And the answer is Long Island's a horrible place to live because there's just way too many people here and everything this guy says is correct and I don't have anything else to add. I think the Cross Bronx Expressway is the, now I guess it's technically not Long Island. Right. It's the worst, to me, that's the worst roadway in America. There's never not traffic. It's Long Island got so bad, I had to move. Like, there's right. never a good, it used to be windows of, you know, right. p- potential driving right. windows that were serviceable. Right. Th- this is now, no matter what time yeah. you leave, no matter which direction you're going, it's a disaster. There's like there's traffic people. at 1130 on a Wednesday morning. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Right. And if it's not yeah. traffic, it's construction and it's road work. It's just it's always something. I've always said you have to be an asshole to live on Long Island. I mean, I got out. What's your excuse? I'm an asshole. <laughs> All right. At I love M. Francesa. Would you rather be forced to A... Only watch the Giants and Jets like Sal, or B, only watch baseball games announced by Bob Costas with the volume on 30 and no chance of mute. 
That's an easy, I mean, that's a no-brainer. Costas, uh, there's no way I'm only watching the Jets and Giants. That would ruin me way more. I could suffer through three hours of Costas because I could at least make fun of how bad he is. And But there is no way I can sit there on a Sunday and only watch the Jets and Giants. I would. I mean, I, I can't do it. So that's my answer. Yeah, you, I would choose uh, the Jets and Giants. Yeah, you oh, have to. No, wait. Well, no, not, but, but to you me. You mean you I, would choose Costas? I would not choose Costas. I would choose to watch just the Jets and Giants. Oh, oh no, but but what if you didn't have the job you have? I I think I still would rather. I mean, I don't think Costas is that bad, but the volume blared all the way up. That could be <laughs> annoying. I mean, the volume up at thirty. I don't want to watch anybody at that volume, let alone Bob Costas. So I'm a, I'm okay with that. Yeah. That's ridiculous. I ripped Costas. You defended him, and now I'm the one saying I'd watch him, and <laughs> you saying you you wouldn't watch him. I've what, gotten what? used to watching just the Jets and Giants. Mm -hmm. I mean. Not that I only watch them exclusively, but if I had to, I think I could survive doing it. All right. Bray MB1. Is there anything that would get you to go to a Yankees World Series game in person? No. Really? Yeah. You know, I, I've been at I couldn't Yankees have Yankees less party. interest in going. The, we just talked about we just talked about the drive. Yeah. You know what it would take driving to Yankee Stadium with 50,000 people there for a play? And then getting out of there? Take the no? train. Yeah. I went to game two of each round so far. Not awful. You went to game two of Yankees Guardians? Yeah, last night I was there. Yeah. Took me two hours to get home. I took the train. You took the train and it took you two hours well, to get home. I leave from work. Yeah. I, I leave from work. I, I, I rest my subway case. Subway up, subway back down. Yeah. I leave a little early. Yeah. You know. All right. Oh, see, yeah. That, see, that's Bush League. You go to the game and you leave early. That's oh. Bush League. Bush. Leave. What do you think I'm leaving with the masses? No effing way. Well, then, that's what I'm that. right. Well, yeah, you're cheat. Okay, you're cheating. All right. <laughs> At Drownomatic 5000, do you think the announcer booth is aware the Guardians are playing? Listen, I, I don't want to be the dickhead New Yorker saying this, but the, all these, they, everything's going to cater to New York. It's just. If the, oh. if the Indians were competitive, yeah. they'd probably be rooting for the, uh, the Guardians. If the Guardians were competitive, they'd root for the Guardians. The Guardians are not competitive. Here's what I'll say. Are the Guardians playing? I'm not watching them play. They're a lot of pathetic. They're booting balls left and right. They're not playing. They're been non-competitive. And ALCS, pathetic. Dr. Nacho MD, does the NFL have a serious product quality problem with all of the penalty flags games are becoming unwatchable and it seems the joy sucked out of any big play by the search slash wait for a flag well he's a hundred percent about one thing whenever there's a big play i don't and this is even coming as a better let's say i bet a team the guy they got a 70 yard touchdown i don't celebrate for five minutes because i'm waiting for the flag oh new york the overhead people told us it you can't celebrate anything the, to me, I would not say the games are unwatchable. The, the NFL is still very wide. But yes, there's a problem. The refs stink. And in their defense, you know, you get mad, they throw a flag, they show the replay, and then it's an obvious penalty. Troy, this is what Aikman alluded to on Monday night when the Jets and Bills had a penalty on every play. It's like, well, he's like, that's a penalty. He's like, what are they, what are they supposed to do? You have to call it. You know, so I don't know. I mean, the players are not, the players should get some of the blame here, not just the refs. And by week six, it should be starting to clean up a little bit. Because we know about the early season woes, no preseason. They don't practice the way that they used to. Monday night was pathetic. Like, it was right. so ugly of a game. You can't – it was just – it is – but it's the NFL, so you watch it. Right. It's really unwatchable, but you're watching it because you bet on it, because you care about right. the result one way or another. But it was awful. As much as they throw the flags, they usually get – the holding, the pass interference, the illegal shifts. They get all that right. Where they mess up usually is the roughing the passer. That's the one that they should back off on. All right. Um, at Bray MB1, upcoming predictions for flexing Sunday Night Football this season. I don't want to give you like a, a jerk answer, but I actually wrote a whole column about this today on Wednesday, so look that up. But there are some games... Um, there is an I'll, I'll look it up quick. I believe that there's like an Eagles Jaguars game in prime time Ooh. that ab well here's here's what I okay, here it is. So week 10 Sunday night is Lions Texans. That's a great game. But Monday night football has Dolphins Rams. That's atrocious. Uh week 11, week 11 Sunday night football is Colts at Jets. I don't think they'd flex out of New York. 
Um, but there was a Raven Steelers game and a Packers Bears game at one o'clock that day. Those are both a million times better than Colts Jets. What are the rules with the flex? When does that start? So for Sunday night, it can be flex now. Monday night starts like week 13, I think. And how many do they have? You can do two, I think, or something like that. For the whole time? Yeah. So they're not going to do it now. Although I will say they well, need to do us a favor and not have Dolphins and Rams. That's that's all. Oh, so this is so week no, no I'm sorry, week nine. This is the game I was talking about. I said week nine is Jaguars at Eagles. They cannot put the Jaguars on Sunday night football. Oh, but here's the problem. This is what I wrote. Okay, so week nine, Jaguars at Eagles, awful, awful game. But there's no good games that day. Broncos, Ravens, Raiders, Bengals, Patriots, Titans. Saints, Panthers, Cowboys, Falcons, Dolphins, Bills, Chargers, Browns, Colts, Vikings, Commanders, Giants, Bears, Cardinals, Rams, Seahawks. There's no obvious flex in there. Maybe you do. Maybe you can do Bears at Cardinals for Caleb Williams, but Jaguars, Eagles is awful in Week Nine. Week Ten, Lions, Texans, excellent, excellent game. Week Eleven, Colts at Jets is an awful game. Week Twelve, Eagles at Rams, very bad game. And then Week Thirteen, they get a great one with Niners at Bills. So there's a couple there they can flex. All right. Yeah, too early for me to start thinking about the flex. Oh, I love thinking about the flex. All right, you're gonna I mean, love it's week this. Six. I guess week I don't want to watch the riff. Don't give me the Jaguars. Don't give me the Panthers. Don't give me the Browns. The Titans, yeah. Will Levis is awful. The Giants are on the verge. I don't, those are t- unwatchable teams. The Eagles are becoming an unwatchable team. Yeah, I know. All right. You're going to love this question from Web02, Web underscore 02. If you had to pick one of the following two options for the rest of your life, what do you pick? Option one, Salicata. You can watch football, but never gamble on it again. Option two, you can't ever watch football again, but you can gamble on it. Huh? Option one, you can watch football, but you can never gamble on it ever again. Option two, you can't ever watch football, but you can gamble on it. I would easily take number one in this case. Like, I I wouldn't, I I think you could ask that question in a more difficult way, but I want to watch the game. That's, 99% 99% of the fun when gambling. If I couldn't watch it, like I'm not that much of a addicted gambler, especially at this right. point in my life, that I would just need to bet and never watch it. Me, yes. personally. No, I'm with you. I would choose one, too, because I don't... If I'm not watching the games, I don't want to bet the game because I don't know what I'm talking... I, 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 right. I, you got to be able to scout. Right. I want to watch the games. That's where, that's where the love all started from. The love of watching the games was be for me was before gambling. I mean, then once you discovered right. gambling and those little, you know, white or yellow tickets that they would pass around school, little parlay tickets, yeah, that took the whole love for football to a whole new level. I never. It's weird. I don't know what it was at my. I don't. I don't think we had the parlay tickets. I don't remember that. Here's how I got it. I think this is what happened. I was in college, and I wanted to start betting the games. And I think some, I, I must have asked people like, how do, how do I, who's, who do I get in touch with? And they go, find the big kid, Chris. And then I, who like, and then I found this guy and now he's like, you know, I became, I was like the best man at his wedding. Like, and he was your bookie? Started. Well, he got me in touch with a bookie. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. This is from Boston Broker 33. Location aside. Do you prefer Sal Licata's New Jersey man, M-A-N-S-E, is that short for mansion? M-A-N-S-E, I never saw that word before. Or the old Long Island haunt when accounting for viewing amenities and aesthetic appeal? Well, I haven't had, I haven't had the full football Sunday at the new house. So it's hard to judge. I was there. We watched a little baseball, I think, when I was there. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're taking out the location because obviously the location that the answer is easy. Um, hmm. I feel like the screen in the new house is bigger or same size. Same size. It is the same size, but in it, it's it's more raised. The other place was definitely right. more like cozy and dark and like in a cave. No, I no, I think I like I like the new. See, I don't like dark cave. 
So I think I like the new setup better. Yeah. Because if I the think, screen is the same, yeah, same and the stuff. chairs are the same. Basically, yes. Yeah, I think I like a little lighter, the new and, setup. With, I like the, space, the big ceiling, the big ceiling. Yeah, yeah the space yeah. is much be- much bigger in yeah. this current setup than the other one. You had a great setup in the old place, but you did feel like you were in a basement. Right. Well, you are. And, right. and no bathroom right. down there, limited. The, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, now yeah. everything's right there. Space to put yeah. the pizza on or whatever, although I know you don't eat during football Sundays. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. It's funny you say that. Right on cue, Joe Co. 7. How does the 9.30 a.m. game affect your typical NFL Sunday routine? I mean, the way it affects it is usually I'm out doing things up until about 12.30-ish. Now, nothing gets done. It's, I, I basically I, I get up I, I I go out to breakfast, come back, and watch the game, and then you know do my bre- my bet prep while watching. It it doesn't other than you got to make sure your fantasy is in in line before then. If you want to bet the game, sure. I generally unless it's like uh, unless it's a New York team, I don't remember making it a focal point. So what it does is eliminate one game from the one o'clock window, which I like. Fewer games at one, which makes it easier to get all of them in. That's how so you you won't be locked into the riveting Jaguars Patriots till Sunday at nine thirty this week. No bleeping way. No I gotta games. admit, I, I'm actually contemplating skipping that one. I may I skip, skip the that Bears. one. I watched well, the other one, Jets Jets Vikings, obviously, but yeah. The, the I wanted to Jaguars. I wanted to watch that for Caleb Williams, but what about Drake May Sunday? No, don't. I don't think he's good. I didn't. Okay. So I'm not. Yeah, I'm not into it. So this is interesting. I got a question here from Av- AVGJHON. Average. Why does Mike Greenberg not host his podcast, Greeny, very much anymore? And then I got a question from Suffering Jim. What's the point in Greeny having a radio show if he's never on it? I don't I, – I, I can't answer that because – well, here's my – I don't listen to it and – my answer would be the guy says for 5 million jobs. Like if he's on get up every day and he's on now, now he's the new host of the ESPN Sunday pregame show NFL countdown. I know he has a podcast with Mel Kiper and field Yates, I think. So I guess he just blows off his radio show. I don't know. I mean, that's my guess is he's busy. I don't know. Hmm. Um, uh, um, I have no idea. I didn't even know he had a radio show. Yeah. Billy Blake to Cincinnati sell week eight. The Bengals versus the Eagles game has already been flexed to 425. No, from 425 to 1 o'clock to make room for the late afternoon window of Bears Command. Yeah, they're going Bears Commanders. They're going for Caleb Williams versus Jaden Daniels. The Eagles are terrible, so that's why they did that. The Eagles are an awful, awful watch. Which week is that? Next week, week eight. Okay, that's a huge matchup. Yeah. M. Silvers, 1979. Hypothetical. If the Raiders were to make the Super Bowl and it's Fox's year to carry the game and Tom Brady is part owner of the Raiders, then how do you think the NFL and Fox navigate? Now, that's interesting because Fox does that. We talked about this earlier. Fox does have the Super Bowl this year. I, you know, that is a really great, great question because I think Brady can work around it during the regular season. No, oh, because they wouldn't schedule him for a Raiders game. But if they made the Super Bowl, he's got to do the game. No, no, even if, no, no, what he's saying is if the Raiders aren't making the Super Bowl, let's say the Super Bowl is whatever, the Chiefs against the Niners, he can't talk to any of those teams. You need to talk to the teams for the Super Bowl. Oh, I thought he was saying that what if the Raiders made it? How would he do oh, that? Oh, I game? see, hypothetical. If the Raiders would have, well, I'm not doing, the Raiders are not making the Super Bowl at any time in the near future. So I, I'm not, I can't be bothered with that question. It's a problem. Forget the Raiders. Well, he said it's a hypothetical, right? But if the Raiders, yeah, what would you do? I mean, the Raiders haven't been good in 50 years. So I, I don't know. I mean, if the Raiders make the Super Bowl and it's a Fox year, I don't think Fox can let him call the game. That he Greg cannot Olsen. call. The, give, give him back yeah. in there, Olsen oh and Burkhart. <clears throat> yeah, if I'm answering this guy's question legitimately, there is no way Fox can let him call that game. Which is why I just think that there's, it's never going to be a factor because the Raiders suck, but it's just still a conflict of interest yeah. having an owner broadcast games, even if he's a minority owner. 
Yeah, uh, Bob Moore, NV. Brady is now part owner of the Raiders, but he'll face possible restrictions. How do you feel about these restrictions? If true, will it impact his growth as a Fox announcer? Again, I, I think they can work around him not being at the meetings. Like I said, Burkhart and Aaron Andrews and Tom Rinaldi beat the meetings. They'll feed Tom all the information. But him not being able to criticize is, you know. But also then, what's the point of him not going to the meetings if he's going to get the information anyway? Like, why can't he go to the meetings then? He's, he's going to get the not, information. You're right. Right. Well, because they got to make it, you know, appearances, appearances. Right. But if, if hypothetically he did a game between the Chiefs and Chargers, whatever. Yeah. And there was information that could potentially help his, his the team that he owns, the Raiders. Right. Or it could be the next week opponent. What if he's doing a game between the Cowboys and Lions and the Lions play the Raiders next week and he gets information like, I don't know. Clearly, the NFL doesn't have a problem with it because they let approved him as an owner. Yeah. So, I yeah. don't. So, do you think he should not call games? I think it's a conflict of interest. I'm not trying to say like, yeah. you know, on the high horse, Brady, you can't call game. I'm just saying right. that it it just it just doesn't it doesn't sit right. I mean, maybe they got to. I mean, yeah. I mean, where do you draw the line? Do you may, maybe Fox can't have him call any AFC West games, or maybe they don't have him call any AFC games? I, you know, they don't. Have a talk. I mean, he calls the Cowboys every week anyway, so it doesn't matter. But. <laughs> All right. Uh, ben Rec Ricoche. Jimmy, feel like you haven't mentioned the WNBA playoffs a lot. Scheduling these great finals repeatedly on NFL Sunday kills the momentum. Yes, I know. Scheduled before the league. Boom. Just the entire situation has been odd, been odd somewhat baffling, but change is coming soon. Okay. So over the weekend, I sent out a tweet saying, like unbelievable schedule for New York sports fans. And I put down like Yankees, Mets, mm -hmm. Jets, Giants, and this over the, and well, first of all, I had people responding like, Oh, the Rangers. Oh, no, I, I'm, nobody cares about regular season hockey and I don't watch hockey. So I didn't even know they were playing. And then I got a lot of people with like the Liberty are playing at three o'clock on Sunday. Uh, no, a lot of it was like, people being sarcastic and like, you know, they're trying to like do that thing where they're like, they want to say I'm sexist without saying it. And they're like, you forgot the Liberty. Well, no, I didn't forget the Liberty. I had no idea they were playing. So how would I forget it? I didn't even know it. Here's the deal. I don't watch the NBA and I don't follow the NBA. That's number one. So WNBA. I don't know the schedule WNBA, but here's the other thing. If there was a chance I'd watch the sport, if you put the game on at three o'clock on a Sunday, there is less than a 0% chance I'd watch one second of it. So it's a completely, so to answer this guy's question, my guess is, this would be my guess. My guess is the WNBA has probably done research that shows there is not a big crossover between WNBA fans and NFL fans. Because if there's any crossover, putting the game at three o'clock on a Sunday is dereliction of duty. And whoever did that should not be in charge of the WNBA schedule. You can actually put the game you have very, very small windows on a Sunday where you could put that game. Like if you start that game at seven o'clock at night, you could get people tuning in in between the end of the 425 games and the start of the 820 game. Three o'clock on a Sunday, I, I there's no chance. There's just no chance. So yeah. I can't, I don't know why the league does that. My guess is they don't think there's a crossover audience. That would be my guess. It, it's stupid. I mean, but I'm not a WNBA. Uh, I don't even want to say I'm not a fan because I've watched some and I have mild interest in it. But like you said, it, on a football Sunday, like baseball's lucky it gets attention, or or right. hockey if you're a hockey right. fan, like they right. all start to to lose when you. But think about it this way: if Kalen Clark was in the WNBA finals and the game was on a Tuesday night where there's no football and no people would watch that, right? Sunday right. at three o'clock, I can't. Right. What I if she was in it? What if it was Caitlin Clark in the finals? The rating would be higher, but I'm not watching what not, 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 three o'clock on a Sunday. You got no chance. No, you're burying it. No, you can't. You've got no chance. <clears throat> There's not one thing I'd watch at three o'clock on a Sunday other than the NFL. Baseball not one playoffs. No, I mean, it would be on an iPad. Yeah, I got it. All right. Um, Someone just sent in, so the Jets, question mark. I mean, listen, again, T.J. Watt's going to have 74 sacks, and people want to get excited about Devontae Adams. I just, Yeah, I'm okay. with you. I, I actually think Rodgers is going to get hurt. This will be the game where they're going to get to him, beat him up so badly he'll get hurt, 
And then you're going to have Rob, uh, Adams here, who's going to be disgruntled because he's going to have Tyrod Taylor throwing the football for the next few weeks. I think the interesting question is, is Garrett Wilson going to get frustrated when Aaron Rodgers throws every pass at Devontae Adams? Yeah. But again, who's the offensive line is horrific, and they're going to face T.J. Watt. Good luck. They're in big trouble. Yeah. All right, Bill Finnerty, 716. This is the last one, I believe. So without a doubt, Troy Aikman has become head and shoulders the best color commentator in the business. Buck, very good. Aikman, great. Is this possibly the biggest win for ESPN Disney in the last five years? I think it's not close. Unfortunately, it doesn't help with their other content that is so financially draining. Um. I don't think you can state enough how huge Buck and Aikman are for ESPN. They went through several Monday night booths that, they, you know, it was Tariq and Gruden and I love Tariq, but I was never a Gruden fan. So I never liked that booth. And that was okay. Then, that booth, it was good, but not great. Gruden annoyed the shit out of me. Um, then they went through that horrible experiment where they put Booger McFarlane on a crane with Joe Tessitore and Jason Witten. Jason Witten had no business calling those games. Then it was Levy. Um, so Buck and Aikman, not only, I mean, they did two things. They they are great, and then they sort of stabilized and reversed what was a very bad course for ESPN. Probably is, without a doubt, the biggest plus for ESPN over the last five years. I mean, I know this is controversial. I think adding McAfee was enormous for them. Forget how you feel about McAfee. Take McAfee and you're, oh, not you, but whoever's listening, your personal feelings about Mag take that out. ESPN has Aaron Rodgers on their air for an hour every week. They have Nick Saban on their air every hour, They every week. They have Bill Belichick on their air every week. They have J.J. Watt on their air every week. He, The guests he has all going to ESPN is huge for them. So I would, I don't think, I think Buck and Aikman are more important than McAfee. McAfee takes up three hours a day of programming, which is, you know, that's what it's about in this business. So um, without a doubt, Buck and Aikman, the biggest win for ESPN in the last five years. Yeah, I don't know, like, what's more valuable to the company. I know how important McAfee is, but from a Monday night football standpoint, you're right. We've been talking about this. It seems like for years, oh, this guy, these guys aren't good enough or this crew. With Buck and Aikman, you don't even think about it. They're so good. You feel the greatness. It's actually like, this is what the Jets need to do. Like, all the other bad hires before it are like the Jets and their head coaches. And then you need somebody to come in here and stabilize and get some greatness who knows what they're doing. Buck and Aikman have stabilized Monday night in ESPN. The Jets could use that like as the head coach. It's, it's really a business model that should be looked at. Speaking of ESPN, I should have asked you this before, but I just want to get you. Do you know that? So this week in the NFL, there's two Monday night football games. Yeah, I saw that. Now let me break it down for people listening. So you have, now, it, when they had the doubleheaders the two weeks this season, they were 7.30 and 8 o'clock. This week, it's 8.15 and 9 o'clock. So you have ravens Bucks at 8.15 Good game. On, on ESPN. That's Buck and Aikman. And then at 9 o'clock, Chargers, Cardinals, ESPN Plus Ooh. only. Only. I don't have that. I'm out. You don't have ESPN Plus? No. What? No, I mean, why would I have football? ESPN? How, I, that's a separate thing I have to buy? Yes. Yeah, I don't have that. So I'll, there, I'll be out. Do, do you have Hulu? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Because there's a Hulu ESPN plus Disney bundle. D Disney I have, but no, not the other stuff. So I you don't will think not I need watch. It. Like, I'm not going to go. I'm not, I wouldn't watch that game anyway. Plus, it might be up against baseball. I think that's game six NLCS potentially. ESPN plus. Oh, no, maybe game I, seven. I feel like there won't be too much outrage because I think most people have. You're a weirdo not having ESPN Plus, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I just got that Gotham app, by the way, for Knicks and Rangers. Are you paying for it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? 30 bucks a month, Knicks and Rangers. Because why? YouTube TV doesn't have MSG? Correct. Yeah. Oh, my God. It just. Remember, it I was able to the baseball package to give the Yankees a Mets, but now I need Knicks and Rangers. That was 30 bucks a month. So I now know. what is your total bill for all of your things? It's still it's still less. And I told you, I didn't do it just for the bill. I did it because oh, right, the right, internet right. service that I was being provided, I only had one option. It sucked. So oh. I had no choice but to go to YouTube TV and upgrade my internet. I would love to know what you're paying, though. Yeah, I, I got to look it up.
Yeah, um, I'm sure. I'm sure. It's probably it's probably still somewhere around. Let's say it's two hundred bucks a month. That seems about right. Like seventy for the internet, seventy ish or whatever for cable. Even if you tack on thirty for the Gotham thing, ten bucks for HBO. Whereas with the other service, I was probably around two twenty, maybe a little bit more. Fascinating. All right. Yeah, I know. Last question from my buddy Andy Gray. Oh. Where does Bobby the Brain Heenan rank on your list of all time sports analysts? Hmm. He's got to be top five. He's up there. He's got to be top five. Um, I'm just trying to think of my Madden. favorite tandems like Monsoon Heenan. Uh, but I loved Gorilla and Jesse, Vince right. and Jesse. Right. He he's probably. I mean, you know, Bobby Heenan, John Andres, Bobby Heenan, Walt Clyde Frazier, Bobby Heenan, mm. and where you get Seaver or Rizzuto, like I probably he's up there. He's probably top three for me. Top three. Yeah. What, I would what say you top Madden. Madden Summer, all right. Madden's gotta be up there analysts madden he might be number two you put aikman in there mm, he'd be it would be madden and heenan one two for me yeah i could see that i mean the 92 royal rumble alone puts him right. in an elite category right. my there's nothing better than the classic clip of when of when um Sean Michaels throws Marty Jannetty through the glass window in the barbershop, and Heenan's like, oh, I knew they were going to make up. And then he throws him. He goes, I knew he was going to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew that was coming the whole time. Yeah. He's like, see, I told you there were no problems yeah. with these guys. They're fine. I'm trying to think. Like, yeah, I would. I think I would have him at number two. What was your, what was your favorite tandem for WWF back then? So someone recently asked me this I think in a mailbag that I wrote, and I said – Monsoon and Heenan were great. Right. But I think the best was Jim Ross with Jerry Lawler. Wow. I think drinking. it helped that it was the Attitude Era. I mean, there were there were episodes of Monday Night Raw where Jim Ross was screaming that Triple H was a son of a bitch at the top of his lungs. <laughs> I mean... You know, and the whole, you know, the Austin, the, the, you know, three, he was, yeah, I was out he, by then. So you, right. But if you take out the attitude here and you go from like when we were kids, you had Monsoon Heenan, Monsoon Ventura, and yes. Man Ventura. Yes. Monsoon Heenan was the best. Mm, I love Jesse, though, too. Yeah, I agree. Probably Monsoon Heenan was the best, but Jesse was a close second. Yeah, Even I Vince yeah. Jesse, I thought was. Do you know that Jesse Ventura is back in the WWE? It's like not he's not back in the W. I, so for people, so for people who don't know, they have this thing called legends contracts where they I guess they could become like an ambassador for WWE and do stuff and he's he just signed a contract. Yeah, which makes me think and I guess I read some rumors or whatever, he might be on the call for the return to Saturday Night Main Event. Which would be Wait. tremendous. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? Jesse the who, body? Yes. But he wouldn't be calling it Vince McMahon. Who would he I mean, I no. wonder who he'd be calling it. But yeah, he yeah, they they should utilize him in some way. I mean, that would be tremendous. Yeah. That would be good. All right, Sal. So how do we feel about before we wrap up? Well, give me like Mets in the World Series. Are you nervous? What's a, what do you think? How many games? What's going on? Um I, I I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I think the Mets are winning two out of three minimum at home. Put it that way. So I, I think worst case, worst case, the Mets are going back to L.A. up 3-2, needing to win just one of game six or seven. How bad would a game seven loss be for you? I'd rather lose to the Dodgers than to the Yankees. I can't. I'm telling you right now, I can't stomach. Think about this run the Mets have been on, this magical run out of nowhere. If it ends with them losing to the Yankees in the World Series, it would it might be the final dagger for me as a sports fan. Are you always don't I always hear you lying to people saying you don't hate the Yankees? 
I don't hate them anymore. Like I well, legit. Then why do you say this would be the worst thing that happens in your life? Because for them to lose to the Yankees again after this run, it would be. I may not hate the. I may not hate the Yankees the way that I once did. I will hate them if it's a Subway Series. Like there's no denying yeah. that. Let me. I'll circle back to that and say, are you going to any of these three games? Yeah, I'm going. Um, I'm going tonight to Game Three, and if Game Five is a potential clincher, I would go to that. Are you going as a fan who buys a ticket? No, I sold my tickets. I'll be going as a with media credentials. So you can't root. Yeah, I mean, I don't really, I don't get nuts at these games anywhere. I'll, I'll, you know, give a little fist pump here or there, but more, I, I watch. I don't go nuts. All right. So, so you'd rather lose to the Dodgers? Oh God, yeah. So if, if so, if the scenario is you beat the Dodgers and get to the World Series, but then you lose the Yankees, you don't want any part of that. No, no way. I'd rather and, than and, lose to five. And to why the exactly? Tell me why. I can't stomach another loss from the Mets to the Yankees. I just couldn't, especially now, especially this year. Here's here's the biggest issue. I firmly believe the Mets are better. I really do believe the Mets play a better brand of baseball than the Yankees. I, I'm not saying they have as much talent. But I think they're better. If they were to lose to this Yankee team after what they've been through this year, oh, God. All right, well, I, all right, so let me ask you this. If it's the Mets and the Yankees and the Mets lose, what, give me, is it, what would be worse? If they got swept, if they lost in seven games? To the Yankees? What would be the ultimate worst? Yeah, what, what would be the ultimate worst scenario? I, I just think, I just think losing to them, it could be in four or seven, it would it would be bad. Probably the worst thing that would be like the Mets go up 3-0 and then blow a lead or up 3-1 and blow that lead. That would be the worst where you're expecting to win. Mets up 3-0, Yankees come back and win. Even up 3-1. You Mets will up, be. Mets up 3-1, chance to clinch it at City Field in a game five. They lose that. Go back to the Bronx for game six and seven. Lose those. That would be. That's the worst. <laughs> uh, but let's say, I'm trying to think. I mean, let's say Judge and Soto got like really, really hot. Yeah. And Garrett Cole is Garrett Cole and he's giving them seven innings, one run ball. Yeah. Still just would be the worst thing that happens to you. There's there's no way any self respecting Mets fan could say anything other than what I'm saying, especially this year. Think about how they got to the playoffs, how they beat Milwaukee, disposing of the Phillies. In this scenario, they would have beaten the Dodgers. All of that. Chasing their first World Series win since 1986, only to lose to the Yankees. Oh, oh <laughs> that would that would kill me. That would be the end of my Mets. I couldn't. I couldn't survive that. I couldn't survive it. I'm telling you now, that would be it. It'd be over. I'm trying to think of. You wouldn't care about losing to the Mets at all. No. The only team I care about losing to is the Red Sox. That's the only team I don't want to lose to. Yeah. yeah. The O3. But yeah. I blame that on A-Rod. He was the jinx. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to... There's nothing worse. I remember. I uh, see, I can't, I, I can't lose in this scenario. Because well, the if Yankees the... Did it? Yeah. Because if the... I'll tell you why. If the Yankees win, I get to see my team win another World Series. And I, I said this before. I really want Judge to win it. That's The most right. important thing for me is Aaron Judge gets a ring. So that criticism can be thrown in the garbage. Right. But if they lost the World Series to the Mets, your job at WFAN Radio, Monday through Friday from 10 to 2, would be nothing but phone calls from Yankee fans saying Brian Cashman's got to go. Right, right. That would be your whole show for a month. Maybe maybe longer, but they probably right. still wouldn't make that change. So. No, they're never going to make that change. He has a job for life. All right. But can you imagine if the Mets beat the Yankees in the World Series, every call you get will be, if George was alive, oh, if George God, was alive, no. it's the ultimate. If George was alive, scenario. this would never happen, right? <laughs> if George were alive, this right. would have killed him, right? It's going to be, but it's going to be more about if George was alive and the Yankees lost to the Mets, Cashman would be fired the next day, all right? But he has a job for life, so. Yeah. All right. Well, I did, I mean, the fact that you're so now, I really I don't know what to do with this Yankees mess. I, I mean, the Yankees are there. You guys got to get there. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Yankees are two wins away. The Mets are three wins away. Yeah, but, the, nice. Yankee, but the Mets are playing a real team. The Yankees. I, are I not. know. I was, 
was going to say, it'd be nice to have two buys like the Yankees did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But that's why I think it's going to hurt them in the long run because they're not battle tested. All right. Well, good luck to the Mets. Right. I'm glad you go with a press pass because if you were going as a fan with a ticket, I'd be worried about you. Maybe a little. Yeah, no, no. Little incident, but you got to behave with the press pass. So that's good. That's good. Yeah, those days are, are long. Well, long next beyond. week, maybe we'll be talking about a Subway Series. No, I'm sure everybody's going to love that nationally. <laughs> They'll survive. All right. Take it easy, Sal. We'll All right. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. All right. My thanks to Sal Licata. My thanks to you for the questions. If you missed any recent episodes of SI Media with Jimmy Trina, go into the archives. Give them a listen, download, subscribe. Paul Feinbaum was tremendous last week on the podcast. Andrew Marshan and David Shoemaker two weeks ago. Jeff Passan, Brad Nessler, recent guests as well. So make sure you subscribe to SI Media with Jimmy Trina. And if you leave a review, that helps as well. All right. We'll see you next week. Stay safe and take care. <laughs>